Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. And welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, December 4th, 2022, little after 3 p.m. Eastern. In a single moment, in one stroke, you can become enlightened. It doesn't necessarily take thousands of lifetimes. In a single moment, in one stroke, you can become enlightened. It is not a gradual process because enlightenment is not something that you have to invent. It is something that <clears throat> all of us have to discover. It is already there. It is not something that you have to manufacture. If you have to manufacture it, of course, it will take time, but it's already there. Also. Spiritual awakening happens the very instant we are in a pure state of no mind. Spiritual awakening happens the very instant we are in a pure state of no mind. This means when the mind is so calm, so deeply at ease, that it seems to have completely disappeared. When there is only, only a pure witness remains, the watcher of your mind, who does not get stuck to any passing thought, at this moment, your sacred spiritual essence is directly experienced. When your ego has completely let go of this world and everyone in it, not attached to everything, that it wants to happen or doesn't happen, we approach this life from a natural space of peace. The energy of love, joy, and compassion naturally radiate from us without any effort at all. Only in this state is a human being finally, totally, and truly free. The mind is our greatest cause of suffering and awakening to our spiritual essence is what allows us to be liberated from it. Stopping the mind is the only technique we need to transcend all of our problems as we will instantly discover the awesome natural state of bliss within. The stopping of your mind will occur with only the practice of meditation. Anything you believe you have to do or become before you can be free as a denial and distraction from the truth that you already, you are already free, Ellen Cohen. Some spiritual seekers might argue that by constantly ignoring the mind chatter, we are trying to spiritually bypass any heaviness we have inside. This is simply not the case. Your ego cannot just decide to instantly throw away the karma your body is carrying and never see it resurface again. What fun would that be just to hit the delete button? The un this universe is far too fun and intelligent of a playground for nonsense like that. The reason we came here to this planet is to enlighten our load by releasing all of our karma, meaning we are learning how to let in love by letting go of our over-identification with any heavy, hard, cold, tight, contracted, angry, guilty, shameful, or prickly protective energy that we're carrying. The good news is, is that large layers of our karma begin falling off when we are dropping directly into our spiritual essence for just a few minutes at a time. If we want to reach the state of spiritual enlightenment, the first thing we want to do is stop doing. Stop doing whatever you are trying to accomplish in your life and just 
be. Stop thinking, stop efforting, and stop trying to achieve anything. Letting go of doing, having, dropping, achieving, anything for a few weeks will do each of us wonders. Trust me on this one. You need a real vacation. You need some space away from your ego where you can be empty of achieving and relax deeply inside. Give yourself time to let go of all your intense inner efforting that you've been at for years. Try it. Just for an hour today, sometime today. Try it. Relax into your body. And relax into your heart of hearts that you are an infinite being and will never die. How many of us do you think do that? Allow for this one simple truth to be found in each experience today and a dynamic shift in your consciousness will occur. Secondly, know that each experience you have in this life is the right experience. Every lesson you are here to learn is being provided to you through each life experience. Remember, nothing is by chance. This universe is constantly giving us all the consciousness we need to embrace each experience, and each experience is designed to awaken, enlighten, and empower us. When our interpretation of each experience includes the knowledge that there exists a divine universal intelligence that loves and accepts accepts you just as you are. You can never have a bad experience. This universe is an infinitely intelligent and conscious energy that is always supporting each and every one of us to awaken into our greatest potentiality. We crazy spiritual seekers Spending our lives trying to awaken instead of resting in the awakening that is already here now and always. Kathleen McCartney. Our problems, anxieties, and personal issues are like particles of sand in between our toes. Depending on how we walk, they either grind at us or massage our feet. Our problems are always our greatest spiritual teachers in disguise. Explore each one of them with a childlike curiosity and they will reveal themselves as the brilliant messengers that they are. We have a pearl of greater wisdom inside of us. It simply needs a bit of nurturing and compassion. If you feel stuck, and cannot see what your issues, problems are, simply practice being grateful for whatever is in your life right now and enjoy it. If you approach your life's problems coming from gratitude, you'll turn it into an opportunity for growth. If a certain problem or issue keeps arising in you and will not go away, you need to sit with it, face it directly, and let your mind soften with it. Ask yourself, what is my soul most needing to learn? Write everything down and then read it out loud to yourself. Listen closely to what it says. Every reoccurring problem, challenge, or personal issue in our lives repeats itself because it is unlearned and ignored. Every reoccurring problem, challenge, or personal issue in our lives repeats itself because it is unlearned and ignored. Once we pay attention to the wake-up call by realizing the infinite beings we all really are, our problems will dissolve immediately 
as our eternal infinite spiritual essence presents its full self. We can also explore what this complaining problem creating ego trip feels and sounds like inside of our heads. Try to have an intelligent conversation with this negative other voice who is unhappy. Listen to what it needs. Pay attention to what is underneath the mental chatter happening in your head. This will bring you back into the present moment where your divine spiritual essence abides. Release the past, vision the future, enjoy the present. Evelina Minerva. This now moment is always pointing us towards liberation from our egos. Remain fully immersed in this moment. This is all we need to do becomes deeply curious about what is possible and let the universal intelligence show us the way. Spiritual awakening is a state of pure now awareness that is free from the chattering mind and connected with the infinite, all-loving, powerful source. In this enlightened state, this world is absolutely perfect as it is. We feel, see, and experience the divine order in everything. There is a great warm love in our hearts all the time, and every action in our lives become very, very, very easy because our essence is always at ease. The awesome state of spiritual enlightenment occurs naturally when we deepen in our sadhana. Okay? Sadhana means spiritual practice. And are consistent with it. It's like we need to wash a dirty cloth many times with 100% pure water before we can release all the microscopic particles of dirt hidden inside it. A constant opening to the unlimited source of love, consciousness, universal intelligence inside everything washes away our ego, allowing us to feel more enlightened, empowered, and rested in a loving state, simply being you. When you have raised your vibration enough, your mind will relax and see the deep, eternal love in everything. This relaxation is a state of emptiness where we are surrendered to the vastness of this infinite universe. Supreme states of bliss are available to every one of us now. The man replied... It will, I said. You denounce me now. But as I accept it not, you must take the wrong deed back upon your own person. It is like an echo succeeding the sound. It is like shadow following object. You never escape the effect of your own evil deeds. Be therefore mindful and cease from doing evil. Man is a crowd, a crowd of many voices, relevant, irrelevant, consistent, inconsistent, each voice pulling in its own way, all the voices pulling people apart. Ordinarily, people are a mess, virtually in a kind of madness. We somehow manage We somehow manage to look sane, but deep down, layers and layers and layers of insanity are boiling within us. 
They can erupt any moment. Our control can be lost any moment because our control is enforced from without. It is not a discipline that has come from our center of being. For social reasons, economic reasons, political reasons, we have enforced a certain character upon ourselves. But many vital forces exist against the character within us. They are continuously sabotaging our character. Hence, every day, we go on committing many mistakes, many errors, even sometimes we feel that we never wanted to do it. In spite of ourselves, we go on committing many mistakes because we are not one, we are many. Buddha does not call the mistakes sins. And remember, Buddha only means enlightened one. And we are all enlightened. Most of us have not discovered that. We were taught in this civilization to believe, you know, that these mistakes are sins. Because sins, the only thing sin means is missing the target. It was impressed upon the civilization to make it feel guilty and to add another strand of control. The bodies give us the illusion of many. The gods that we are in the bodies are one. Now, because we call the, you know, call these these mistakes sins, We're condemning ourselves. You could call them misdemeanors, mistakes, errors. To err is human, not to err is divine. And the way from the human to the divine goes through mindfulness. These many voices within us can stop torturing us pulling us, pushing us. These many voices can disappear if and when we become mindful. In a mindful state, mistakes are not not committed. Not that we control them, but in a, in a mindful state, in an alert, aware state, voices, many voices cease. We simply become one. And whatsoever we do comes from the very core of our being. It is, at that point, it is never wrong if you want to believe there's a right and a wrong. This has to be understood before we enter into any sutras. In humanistic psychology, there is a parallel to help us understand it. That's what transactional analysis calls the triangle of PAC. P means parent, A means adult, C means child, PAC, parent, adult, child. These are our three layers as if we are a three-storied building. The first floor is that of the child. The second floor is that of the parent. And the third floor is that of the adult. All three exist together. This is our inner triangle and conflict. Our child says one thing. Our parent says something else. And our adult rational mind says something else. The child says enjoy. 
for the child, this moment is the only moment that they have no other considerations. The child is spontaneous, but unaware of the consequences, unaware of past, unaware of future. He lives in the moment. He has no values, and he has no mindfulness, no awareness. The child lives through feeling. His whole being is irrational. Of course, he comes into many conflicts with others. He comes into many contradictions within himself because one feeling helps him to do one thing, then suddenly he starts feeling another feeling. A child never can complete anything in the time he could have completed it. His feeling has changed. He starts many things but never comes to any conclusion. A child remains inconclusive. He enjoys, but his enjoyment is not creative, cannot be. He delights, but life cannot be lived only through delight. And we cannot remain a child forever. We will have to learn many things because we are not alone here. If we were alone, then there would be no question. We could have remained a child forever. But this society, is there. Billions of people are there. You have to follow many rules. You have to follow many values. Otherwise, there would be so much conflict that life would become impossible. The child has to be disciplined, and that's where the parent comes in. The parental voice in each of us is the voice of the society, culture, civilization the voice that makes us capable of living in a world where we are not alone, where there are many individuals with conflicting ambitions, where there is much struggle for survival, where there is much conflict. We have to pave our paths and have to move very cautiously. The parental voice is that of caution. It makes us civilized, so to speak. The child is wild. The parental voice helps us to become civilized. The word civil is good. It means one who has become capable of living in a city, who has become capable of being a member of a group, of a society. The child is very dictatorial, The child thinks he is the center of the world. The parent has to teach the child that he is not the center of the world. Everybody thinks that way. He has to make you more and more and more alert that there are many people in this world. We are not alone. We never will be. We must choose to consider them if we want to be considered by them. Otherwise, we will be crushed. It is a sheer question of survival, of policy, of politics. The parental voice gives us commandments, what to do, what not to do. The feeling simply moves blind. The parent makes us cautious, and it is needed. Then there is the third voice within us, the third layer. When we have become adult, and we are no longer controlled by our parents, our own reason has come of age, and we can think on our own. The child consists of felt concepts. The parent consists of taught concepts. And the adult consists of thought concepts. And these three layers are continuously in flight. Or you might say, in fight. The child says one thing, the parent says just the opposite. 
And the reason may say something totally different. You see beautiful food, and the child says to eat as much as you want. The parental voice says that many things have to be considered. Whether you are really feeling hungry or just the smell of the food, the taste of the food is the only appeal. Is this food really nutritious? Is it going to nourish your body? Or can it become harmful to you? Wait, listen, don't rush. Then there is the rational mind, the adult mind, which may say something else, totally different. There's no necessity that your adult mind should agree with your parents. Your parents were not omniscient. They were not omniscient. They were not all-knowing. They were as fallible as human as you are, and many times you find loopholes in their thinking. Many times you find them very dogmatic, superstitious, believing in foolish things, irrational ideologies. Your adult says, no. Your parent says, do it. Your adult says it is not worth doing, and your child goes on pulling you somewhere else. This is the triangle within each and every single one of us. If you listen to the child, your parent feels angry. So one part feels good. You can go on eating as much ice cream as you want, but your parent inside feels angry. A part of you starts condemning, and then you start feeling guilty. The same guilt arises as it used to arise when you were really a child. You are no longer a child, but the child has not disappeared. It is there. It is just your ground floor, your very base, your foundation. If you follow the child, you follow the feeling. The parent is angry, and then you start feeling guilt. You follow the parent. Your child feels that he is being forced into things he does not want to do. Then your child feels he is being unnecessarily interfered with, unnecessarily trespassed upon. Freedom is lost when we listen to the parent and our child starts feeling rebellious. Freedom is lost when we listen to the parent and our child starts feeling rebellious. Now, if we listen to the parent, our adult mind says, what nonsense. These people never knew anything. You know more. You are more in tune with the modern world. You are more contemporary. These ideologies are just dead ideologies, out of date. Why are you bothering? If you listen to your reason, then also you feel as if you are betraying your parents. Again, guilt arises. What to do? And it is almost impossible to find something on which all these three layers agree. This is human anxiety. Never do all these three layers agree on any point. There is no agreement ever between the three. Now there are teachers who believe in the child, who emphasize the child more. For example, example Lao Tzu, he said, the agreement is not going to come. You drop this parental voice, these commandments, these Old Testaments, drop all sh- shoulds and become a child again. That's what Jesus says. Lao Tzu, both. Their emphasis is to become a child again because only with a child will you be able to gain your spontaneity 
will you again become part of the natural flow. Tao, the way. Their message is beautiful, but seems to be almost impractical. Sometimes, yes, it has happened. A person has become a child again. But it is so exceptional that it is not possible to think that humanity is ever going to become a child again. It is beautiful like a star, far distant, but out of reach. There have been so many teachers throughout this civilization, throughout thousands of years. Mahavira, Moses, Muhammad, Manu. They say, listen to the parental voice, listen to the moral, what the society says, what you've been taught. Listen and follow it. If you want to be at ease in this world, if you want to be peaceful in this world, listen to the parent. Never go against the parental voice. That's how this world has followed, more or less. But then one never feels spontaneous. One never feels natural. One always feels confined and caged. And when you don't feel free, you may feel peaceful, but that peacefulness is worthless unless peace comes with freedom. You cannot accept it. Unless peace comes with bliss, you cannot accept it. It brings convenience, comfort, but your soul suffers. There have been a few people, again, who have achieved through the parental voice who have really attained to the truth. But that, too, is very rare. And that world is gone. Maybe in the past, Moses, Manu, Muhammad were useful. They gave commandments to the world. Do this. Don't do that. They made things simple, very simple. They have not left anything for you to decide. They don't trust that you'll be able to decide. They simply give you a ready-made formula. These are the ten commandments to be followed. You simply do these. All that you hope, all that you desire will happen as a consequence. You just be obedient. All the old religions, emphasized obedience too much. Disobedience is the only sin. That's what Christianity says. And many of these things have been made up, guys. Such as God had said not to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which Adam and Eve did. They disobeyed. Don't smoke, and the child tries it. The father says, don't go to the movie, and the child goes. The story of Adam and Eve is a story of every child. It's a story. And then condemnation, expulsion. Obedience is religion for Manu, Muhammad, Moses. But that world is gone, and through it, not many have attained Many became peaceful, good citizens, respectful members of the society, but nothing much more. Then there is the third emphasis on being adult. There's the Confucius, Patanjali, or modern agnostics like Bertrand Russell. All humanists of this world emphasize, believe only in your own reason. That seems very arduous, so much so that one's whole life becomes just a conflict. Because you've been brought up by your parents. You have been conditioned by your parents. If you listen only to your reason, you have to deny many things in your being. In fact, your whole mind has to be denied. It is not easy to erase it. And you were born without any capacity to reason. That too is there. Basically, 
you are feeling being, reason comes to you very late. It comes when, in fact, all else that has to happen has happened. It is said that a child gains almost 75% of their whole knowledge by the time they are seven years old. 50% by the time they are four years old. This whole learning happens when we are a child and reason is a very late arrival. It is very difficult to live just with the reason. People tried. Bertram Russell, here and there, but nobody has achieved truth through it because reason alone is not enough. All these angles have been chosen and tried and nothing has worked. Now, it is also said not to choose any. Move in the center of the triangle. Don't choose reason. Don't choose parent. Don't choose the child. Just move in the very center of the triangle and remain silent and become mindful. This is tremendously meaningful. Then we will be able to have a clear perspective of our being. And out of that perspective and clarity, let the response come. We can say it in another way. If you function as a child, that is a childish reaction. Many times we function as a child. Somebody says something, we get hurt, and there is a tantrum and anger and temper. We love everything. Later on, we feel very bad about it, that we destroyed our image. Everybody thinks us so sober, and we were childish. And nothing much was at stake. Or we follow our parental voice, but later on, we think that still we are dominated by our parents. We have not yet become an adult, mature enough to take the reins of our lives into our own hands. Or sometimes we follow reason. But then we think that reason is not enough. Feeling also is needed. Without feeling, the rational being becomes just the head. He loses contact with the body, loses contact with life. He becomes disconnected. He functions only as a thinking mechanism. But thinking cannot make you alive. In thinking, there is no choice or juice of life. It is a very dry thing. Then we hanker. We hanker for something which can again allow our energies to stream, which can again allow us to be green and alive and young. This goes on, and we go on chasing our own tails. These are all reactions, and any reaction is bound to be partial. Only response is total. And whatever is partial is a mistake. Whatsoever is partial is a mistake because our other parts will remain unfulfilled and they will take their revenge. Be total, response is total, reaction is partial. When we listen to one voice and follow it, we are getting into trouble. We will never be satisfied with it. Only one part will be satisfied. The other two parts will be very much dissatisfied. So two-thirds of our being will be dissatisfied. One third of our being will be satisfied. And we will always remain in a turmoil. Whatsoever we do, reaction can never satisfy us. 
because reaction is partial. Response is total. Then we don't function from any point in the triangle. We don't choose. We simply remain in a choiceless awareness. We remain centered. And out of that centering, we act. Whatsoever it is. It is neither child nor parent nor adult. We have gone beyond, beyond pack, parent, adult, child. It is you now, neither the child nor the parent nor the adult. It is you, your being. That pack is like a cyclone, and your center is the center of the cyclone. So whenever there is a need to respond, the first thing is to become mindful. Become aware. Remember your center. Become grounded in your center. Be there for a few moments before you do anything. There is no need to think about it because thinking is partial. There is no need to feel about it because feeling is partial. There is no need to find clues from your parents, the Bible, Quran, Gita. These are all parent. There is no need. You simply remain tranquil, silent, simply alert, watching the situation as if you are absolutely out of it. Aloof, a watcher on the hills. This is the first requirement to be centered whenever you want to act. Then out of this centering, let the act arise. And whatsoever you do will be virtuous. Whatever you do will be right. Right mindfulness is the only virtue there is. Not to be mindful is to fall into error. To act unconsciously is to fall into error. See, we have these. You know, whenever you're, you know, you're in a situation and you're, we kind of jump the gun, most, most of us do. We react, right? And when we react, we error. Because we didn't stop for a moment before we acted, before we did anything. And we didn't watch. So we kind of jumped the gun based upon reaction. It's like, it's no different than you know, have you ever gone to the doctor and they tap the knee, right? Just, just under, just, just, just one place causes a knee-jerk reaction where the leg will kick up. You hit that area, the leg kicks up, right? And a lot of us do that in this life. Rather than saying to ourselves, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me, I'm going to watch this and see before I respond to anything. I'm going to just... Sit there and, and watch. Then you may make a comment, or you may not. This is a, it, it is understanding while we're in these physical bodies to be centered whenever we want to act. How many of us do you think are centered when we act? Then out of this centering, let the act arise. And whatsoever you do will be virtuous. Whatsoever you do will be right. Right mindfulness is the only virtue there is. Not to be mindful is to fall into error. To act unconsciously is to fall into error. And a really good understanding, if a man who has committed many a misdemeanor does not repent and cleanse his heart of the evil, retribution will come upon his person as sure as the streams run into the ocean, which becomes ever deeper and wider. 
And what, what's, what's repentance? Repentance means retrospective awareness. Repentance means looking backwards. You have done nothing. If you were aware, then no wrong could happen. But if you were not aware at the time, you did it. Somebody insulted you. You became angry. You hit him on the head. You were not aware what you were doing. Now things have cooled down. The situation has passed. You are no longer in anger. You can look backwards more easily. You missed awareness at that time. The best thing would have been to have awareness at that time, but you missed it. Now there is no point in crying and weeping over the spilt milk, so to speak, but you can look. You can bring awareness to that, which has already happened. These are, this is the, the process of knowing, maneuvering ourselves while we're in these physical bodies, of course, to understand ourselves, not analyze ourselves, not judge ourselves, but to understand the process, the layers, you know, just like the parent-adult child. We all have the parent-adult child in us. And there can never be a balance between the three. It's when we move beyond that. It's when we become centered. It's when we become watchers. And it doesn't mean that we're all zombies and we don't participate in anything. It means that we watch and we don't judge. We learn, we experience while in these bodies. We move into enlightenment, which is already there. Most of us haven't discovered it yet. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose and an easy and slow breath out of the mouth. Remain still. If we look beyond our physical existence, we'll soon discover the subtle realms and experience the infinite quality of our souls. Take a single glimpse into what is beyond this physical 3D world. It will reveal everything any of us need to know. Let something higher from the beyond enter you. For five seconds, at least 20 times randomly today, allow yourself to feel the subtle energy inside your physical body. Tune in to that emotional and super subtle energy you feel vibrating within your being. Get curious about what it is like and where it is coming from. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night and the following morning. We will return here Monday, November, or excuse me, December 5th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be good to yourselves.